Hello again, welcome back to the Day of Daily Bible Study. Uh, we're in Wednesday, but it'll be the last for this week because we have Thanksgiving weekend coming up uh, starting tomorrow. And um, so which is just as well because we're in our last passage of Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians. We're in chapter 5, we're going to pick up in verse 12 and go to the end of the chapter. Before we do that, let's pray. Uh, loving God, we thank you that you give us guidance on how to live. It's not just things that we should believe. It's not just things we should say. You actually show us how we ought to live. Lord, help us to see your example clearly and help us to support one another and encourage one another to be all that you've called us to be. Lord, we ask all these things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So I think it's interesting because uh, towards the end of Paul's letters, there's basically always a section where he leaves with some concrete um, ethical exhortation. And uh, sometimes it's really long, sometimes it's relatively short. Uh, this is relatively short, actually, as it goes. And Paul is going to list several things, and we'll come back to this list. This is what Paul writes. He says, But we request of you, brethren, that you appreciate those who diligently labor among you and have charge over you in the Lord and give you instruction, and that you esteem them very highly in love because of their work. Live in peace with one another. We urge you, brethren, admonish the unruly, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with everyone. See to it that no one repays another with evil for evil, but always seek after that which is good for one another and for all people. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the Spirit. Do not despise prophetic utterances, but examine everything carefully. Hold fast to that which is good. Abstain from every form of evil. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be preserved complete without blame at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he who calls you, and he will also bring it to pass. Brethren, pray for us. Greet all the brethren with a holy kiss. I adjure you by the Lord to have this letter read to all the brethren. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. So um, there's a little bit about uh, um, supporting uh, uh, leaders in the faith, and uh, I'm going to just acknowledge that and then move on. Uh, because I don't like to talk about uh, myself. And, but I want to also, I do want to talk about two things here. One, the other short thing is that ta- pa- Paul talks about may the God uh, of peace himself sanctify you entirely. And uh, one of the things that um, John Wesley would talk about is he talked about uh, Christian perfection. And he had criticized for it. And I've done some videos in a different format uh, to talk about Christian perfection and what it means and how it's not what people usually think it means. Um, but one of the things he would also talk about is he says, if you don't like the word perfection, uh, then maybe you don't have to talk about Christian perfection. How about we talk about entire sanctification instead? And the reason why he says, I don't really care about the words that we use. I'm contending for the substance, not the words. And he says, I will continue to use the term perfection because I believe that it is biblical. And he'll point to where Paul talks about perfection. And again, but perfection in a different way than we usually mean it. Mean it. But uh, Paul's saying, as long as, you know, if we're, let's use words scripture uses because we don't need to invent our own. We can just use what, what, what uh, the Bible says. And this idea of entire sanctification shows up here. I just thought that was really interesting because I, I don't know that I knew that beforehand. But what I really want to focus on today is this kind of list of things. And I'm going to repeat them here. Um, but before I do, I want to remind you that I'm going to do the same thing with this list that I do with any list along these lines. We talked about it uh, with 1 Corinthians, with the gifts of the Spirit. We did it with Galatians, with the fruit of the Spirit. And it's going to be the same thing again here, which is the question is, when we go through and we listen to all these things that Paul advises us to do, I want you to be thinking about who is somebody who actually exemplifies these things all the time. And there's really only one answer to that question that I'm aware of. So this is what Paul says, just that, that list part again. Uh, he says, admonish the unruly, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with everyone, see to it no one repays another with evil for evil, always seek after that which is good for one another and for all people. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophetic utterances, but examine everything carefully, hold fast to that which is good, and abstain from every form of evil. And once again, this is not a detached list of, of, of virtues, as if Paul is mostly trying to say, here's just a grab bag of things you can think about. It's mostly saying, be following into Jesus' footsteps, do what Jesus does, and here are some concrete things to help you be doing some of those things. And it's, it's like, um, I mean, Paul says to the Galatians, he says the, the, the law was like a taskmaster, like, like, like the pedagogue, the guy who took the kids who didn't want to go to school of wealthy families and drove them off to school to make sure that they went. The one who is responsible for getting you to do the things you need to do, even when you don't yet want to do them. But the goal is to want to do them. The goal is to be set free in Christ to do them. In the same way, you know, the admonishment could simply be the Christian life is saying, what should you as a Christian do? Go do the things Jesus did. Go be like Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit. 
And, you know, but if someone were to say, gosh, I don't even know what that looks like. I don't know how to apply that to my life. Then you have Paul here saying, okay, here are some of the things you can do. And we see the same thing with the gifts of the Spirit. You know, what are the kinds of things the church does as a whole? Well, here are some of the things that Jesus did. What are the fruit of the Spirit? What are the kinds of character attributes that ought to characterize Christians? Well, here are some of the things that characterize Jesus. Once again, one more, it's a list of things, but it's not, uh, it's not a floating a freely pile of virtues that we just take and leave when we want to. It's meant to give us a tapestry and a holistic picture of what it means to be a Christian. And it's amazing how much that holistic picture looks an awful lot like the kind of things that Jesus was doing. I bet you could think of examples in, in the, the gospel accounts for just about all of those where you can find concrete examples of Jesus doing exactly what Paul is urging for us to do. I think it's funny because this passage shows up the most often when people talk about the idea of prayer because Paul says pray without ceasing. And it's fascinating. I was, I was asked to give a talk on prayer. Uh, you know, at Christmas weekends, there's a talk about prayer, and it always has a thing about prayer without ceasing. Uh, I was asked to give a talk about prayer um, for, for a camp that I help out with. And, and one of the, they said, well, we want you, here's some scriptures we want you to focus in on. And the first thing I always do is say, I'm not going to focus in on those scriptures. These are the scriptures that really speak to me with this topic. And I'm sure they always roll their eyes when I do that. Um, but that was the thing where I said, I, this, this pray without ceasing doesn't tell us much, anything about concretely what Christian prayer ought to look like. You know? And so I drew on some other uh, examples instead. But it's amazing how much miles that one verse gets. You know, pray without ceasing, this three-word this three uh, verse. Um, and yet, I, while I kind of criticize and kind of roll my eyes at the use of it as a standalone teaching, because pray without ceasing tells, ceasing tells us very little, um, just, it's like the idea that the admonishment of Paul said, do good. Like, okay, great, do good, fantastic. I don't know what doing good is because I need to be told what doing good is. There needs to be some more content there. And I think that Pray Without Ceasing gets content when we look at to see what Jesus actually did. Jesus went off by himself to pray. He would pray, um, you know, uh, at various times during the day. He would retreat by himself to pray. He would have time set aside for prayer. He would pray with one another. You know, this is what praying without ceasing means. It doesn't mean, and no one ever seriously thought it meant, the idea that's all we should do all 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You know, but the question becomes, what does praying without ceasing look like? Well, it looks a lot like what Jesus' prayer life looks like. And we ought to take that seriously. And, and remember that all of these things, we want to say, what does it mean? What does it mean uh, to not repay someone evil for evil? Well, you want to look at the greatest example of that? Look at Jesus on the cross. That's him not repaying evil for evil. We talk about, you know, um, admonishing the unruly. We see Jesus do that. And he does it in some specific ways. And so the idea is, we're not being called by Paul saying, Think about what you mean by people being unruly. Think about what you mean about admonishment and you apply it in a way that makes sense to you. He doesn't mean that. He means, look at Jesus. Look at how Jesus admonishes the unruly. Look at the people that Jesus calls unruly. Look at the way Jesus interacts with them. And that should be the model for how we do it. Not just our own definition of all these terms. They are defined by and have their meaning in Christ. And not necessarily as an individual uh, bits of, of advice, but as a whole that shapes the way we encounter the world. And so that is really, once again, when there's a list, it almost always is pointing to the one Jesus or one key issue uh, that, that binds them all together and gives them meaning. And I think, once again, we look at this list of things. They're all great things, but they're great things because they point us to Jesus, because they are examples of things that we can do to follow that example of Jesus and to, to, to belong to him and in him. Well, that's all for today. That's all for this week. And that's all for this letter from Paul. Uh, come back again next week and we will be starting a new letter uh, in a new week. Have a good day.